and welcome to Yoga Joe. I'm Joe, and so happy to have you. It's day three of twisting out our fears and facing challenges. That's what we're working on for this week. I'm so excited to have you. Hopefully, it's getting better and better. And let's go into it. So let's start off. You can sit on a block or you can sit naturally. So for today's lesson, you're still going to need a belt. Remember, a belt you can use either from a gown, a little belt from around a gown, a tie, anything that you can just hold on to and you can like, stretch from it. You also need a blanket. Today you will be needing a wall. So have a wall. I'm just going to use this wall right here to lean up against. So please utilize a wall, find some space, you just pause and move your mat. And also some blocks. If you don't have blocks, I do sell them, 100 rand each, two for 200. And you can use books if you don't have the blocks. We always have many do. So let us begin. Just crossing your legs, getting yourself nice and comfortable. Sit as comfortable as you possibly can to begin this session. Palms are going to face up. Close your eyes. Nose is parallel. Let's work with some belly breathing. Nice and deep breath in. As you inhale, want your belly to expand like a big balloon. And as you exhale, allow the navel to work towards the spine. Inhaling, pushing out that belly. Exhale, allow the navel to come back in. Focusing on your breath. Enjoying this moment. Thank yourself for being here. Just set your intentions for today's class. It's an important time to set some good intentions and to keep them throughout the class. So twisting our fears and facing challenges, letting go of thoughts of negativity and doubt through some twisting poses. Also by challenging yourself with balance, detoxifying twists create much needed space in the time of fear by releasing negative thoughts in order to move onwards and upwards through grounding and stability. Benefits, make sure that your back it will help your back be supple and free of pain, tone and rejuvenate abdominal muscles, keeps your tummy, your waist, your thighs, your, everything trim, reduces fat around the belly, strengthens and makes the joints supple, it definitely helps for those suffering with arthritis. Warning for those who are pregnant or have any spinal disc or back complications, also, if you've got any hernias, I suggest you find out if, it's, if you're strong enough to do this. And the most important thing is don't twist on a slumped spine. Kindly drop your chin down toward your chest for a little saying for today. Ananas Nin says, life shrinks and expands in proportion to one's courage. Slowly begin to open your eyes, draw your eyes along the floor until your chin is parallel, bringing your palms together. Welcome to yoga. Let's change the cross of our legs to a natural cross. And let's take our arms up to the side. Inhale, lift up big and tall. And exhale all the way down. Once again, inhaling, lifting up. And exhaling, releasing everything up. So we're working to Ada Matsyendra, which is our half Lord of the Fishes pose. We're going to work off a block. You're welcome to work on a block. So as we go in, we're getting a little bit more complicated, a little bit more detailed, and a little bit more challenging. So you can work with a blanket underneath your buttocks. You can work on a block. Or we can go for the full monkey and try and work a little bit harder today. So let's start off having your leg straight out in front of you. We're going to take our right leg over the left and our left knee to the back. So you want to have it nicely set, sitting in and you want to have the top leg nicely sitting up. So I'm sitting up nice and straight, pushing the knee down, lifting the knee up. As I sit here, I'm nice and extended, holding onto that knee, lifting out through the chest. So it's very important that you extend this is great for constipation. If you're also suffering with any indigestion, it lifts through the body and helps with that. So from here, we're going to take our left hand, you're going to place it to the right knee. You're going to swing around the back hand, place it down. You can place it onto a block if you need to. 
holding the hand, we're going to start to twist. So inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. I'm pushing both knees. If you can, you're going to try and make a stop sign. So you place the elbow there. You're going to start to push a little bit further. So as you do that stop sign, you push. You place the hand down, you lift up tall. Now for those who really want a little bit of a challenge, you can go into a little bit of a bind. <laughs> that sounds quite funny, into a bind. So you place your hand there. You bring the hand underneath. You see what's gone underneath. And bring the hand to meet it at the back. And then keep lifting and slowly twisting. So either way, do what you can go to and move with the twist. So let's inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Keep breathing, keep stretching. Holding it here. If it's too difficult, you can always work onto your block. Let's all look forward and begin to look back. Slowly we release. We're coming out of it, releasing to the front. Comfortable release. Let's go back into Dandasana, stretch out those legs, sit up nice and tall. Let's work to the other side. So you're going to take over your left foot, bringing that right leg in. So as you place it in, you're not sitting on the foot, it's just coming nice and comfortable. If you feel that you're lifting too much to bring this leg, you place something under there. You want to be nice and comfortable in this pose. Holding up that knee, sitting up tall. I've got to grow up this, so I'm not slumped. So you must make sure you're sitting up tall. If this is hard enough, this is where you go to. Listen to your body. My favorite saying in life is listen to the whispers before the screams, because when the screams come, it's too late. So we sit up tall, hold and breathe. We're just going to take our left hand behind you. So you're just placing it down, lifting up tall, we're going to start to twist. Now you may have a, a wider stomach here, so you may want to lean back and do a bit of a twist. So you can make some space and then lifting up and starting to twist. So I'll do that from the side, just so you can see different angles of it. So here I am. As I twist with a straight back, you can lean back and twist again. But then make sure you're coming up nice and straight. My buttocks still flat on the floor, my knees up, and I'm twisting. Let's inhale again. Exhale, twist. Now see how it feels to bring that elbow forward, if you can make your little stop sign. You want to still be light on the hand, so you want to be able to twist, dropping down the back, lifting up, looking over the back shoulder, breathe. This is not a heavy hand, you're just leaning softly into it. Now if this is comfortable enough, you're taking your right hand, you're going to place it underneath, and then your left hand, you know, hold. Work into the bind, twist a little bit more. Breathe into it. Sit up tall, straighten. And then slowly looking over to the front. And slowly back over to the back. Releasing. And you stretching out. Stretching to dundas on the legs, lengthening into it. Alright, so you cross over, you can go into all fours, hands in front, knees behind. So let's work into our cat and cow. Most importantly, cat and cow, you're making sure your knees are directly underneath the hips, the hands are directly underneath the shoulders, elbows are turned into one another. You have a nice stable core, so you're not arching. I want you pulling up, tightening through. You activate it all the time. Feet are flat, pushing down behind you. And let's look up with our eyes. If it's too hard, you don't push in your head up. You're just looking up with the eyes as you inhale. Exhale, arch the back, round, looking down the navel. Flattening out, inhaling up. Exhaling, working down. Inhaling, flattening up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. And coming back to the center. So 
Three step. Uh, we're going to take our right arm up to the ceiling. Stretch it up. Big stretch. You want to stack the shoulders here. And we're going to bring that hand underneath. You're dropping it down. You're working onto your head and the shoulders. So everything's down here in a line. It's very important. I often see people coming down and their shoulders not down. I want you to relax onto that shoulder. Work the hips. Let's get the hips nice and square as well. From there, straighten out the left arm. Stretch into it. Breathe. From here, we're going to take our left foot and you're trying to place it to your hand, to your foot. If you don't get it and it's very far, you just work towards it. So that gives me stability into the pose. My head's down, my shoulder and my foot. Stretching, I lengthen into it. I try and stretch from the tailbone all the way down. Now I'm taking the arm up and you can see I can start to lift and stretch into it. Breathe into it. And if you can, you can take your hand down behind. You want to get into the inner thigh and open up a little bit more. Now I can really stretch. Thanks to the last pose we did, I get a nice opening here from it. Placing up my arms, stretching up, hand down, knee in, up, up, up. Let's go to the other side. So lifting up, right arm up. Oh, I did this side. Left arm up. Oh, it's a bit strange. And slowly working it underneath, like threading a needle. Underneath, dropping head and shoulder down, stretching the right arm out in front of you. Slowly taking that leg, that foot to the hand. As I do that, I make sure I'm nice and balanced. It's very important that I'm balanced in the pose. Lengthening out, stretch. Now slowly take the arm up. I can stretch into it and breathe. Remember, in any pose, you can stop and you can just enjoy it where you are. And then if you can, you can take the hand down behind. You want to tuck it in and you want to open up a little bit more. Nice, deep breathing. Arm up to the ceiling. Hand down, knee in, and up we come. Fantastic. We're going to our Adha Mukha Svadasana, which is our downward facing dog. Stepping your hands, one hand step forward, tucking the toes. Let's lift the knees just off the floor. Push the hips back so it's like you're on your marks. Slowly lift up, tippy toes, drop your head, relax the head. Say, oh no, Joe, not again, Joe. And now say, oh yes, Joe, I can't wait to start. Let's drop down our right heel, bending the left knee. Up onto the toes, left heel down. Up onto the toes, right. Up onto the toes, left. Up onto the toes, drop both heels. Stretch it out. It's correct. Make sure our alignment is correct. So you always want a decent size down dog. We check that by a plank. So we work into a plank and make sure you may have to move back slightly. Make sure you're nice and straight. I'm going to work some waves, up on wave sequences into a plank, into a down dog. So from here, I want you to round the back onto the tippy toes, rocking down. From here, you're going up onto the toes, arch the back, round you go, forward. Up onto the toes, you're going back and down. Up onto the toes, it should be working the core. Knock the arms up onto the toes and flatten. Up onto the toes and forward. Up onto the toes and flatten. Last one, up onto the toes and forward. Beautiful. Last, down to your down dog, stretch it out. So from here, let's take our right leg up to the ceiling. Hips are square, know the difference. Yeah, your hip is square, your toes are pointing to the left. And now we're opening up. So now you can open up completely, stretch it out. Drop the head and stretch. Hips are square. Place the foot back down. Let's go to the other side. Left leg, 
Hips are nice and square, toes pointing towards the right. Now you're opening it up, stretching to breathe, push out the shoulders. Hips come back square and lazing down. Wonderful. When I'm working shoulders, a wild thing, one of my favourite poses. <laughs> wild thing is a lovely thing to do. It's called um, Kamat, Kamat um, Kara Sana, Kamat Kara Sana. And it's a great thing because it really works your hip flexors, flexors so it opens you up into the pose. So let's take up our right leg. I'm just going to work over a little bit. Right leg up to the ceiling. Bend the knee. I want you to look underneath the armpit as much as you can. Twist. Now slowly with control. That foot becomes heavy. You want to bring the feet parallel to one another. You want to lift through the core and you want to open up and extend. Breathe. You can place your hand on your heart. And extend it up. And slowly to come back. Exactly how you came up. So you place the hand down, lift that leg up to the ceiling, place the foot down. I'll work a little bit back over to my mat on the other side. I'm lifting my left leg up we go, stretch, look underneath the armpit, open, feel the big stretch, hips. That foot becomes very heavy so it takes you down to the floor. Hips are nice and square, lift up through the core, open, give your heart away, stretch. Big stretching, and then slowly, hand comes back down, lift up, and place the foot back down. Fantastic stuff, stretch it out, lengthen. Take your toes together, your knees apart, and take a seat. So we're going to work into Bakasana, Pajva Bakasana. And the greatest things about these poses, they, they really help with your confidence, they help with mental and body stability, strength, focus, all of those things come from this pose. It will help a lot with your flexibility, your balance, um, also just getting your mind in the right place. And I think that's where we really have to be at this point. So the warnings are obviously if you're menstruating, I don't want you going up. Um, I'll give you dolphin to do and I'll explain it afterwards. If you know what you're doing, off you go. Um, otherwise, the, the most important thing is high blood pressure, bone displacement, neck problems. It's a no-no. So we'll grab our little blanket and we'll work into Bakasana. So as I said, the most important things at work, as I said, I always say, foundation is everything. If your foundation is wrong, don't go up. So spend more time getting the foundation right than even bothering to go up. You can do this against a wall. It's a great way to practice. And there's different various things. Once you're up, do some twists. Once you're up, open your legs up wide. Play with it. Do some, have a little bit of fun in the moment. In the moment. It's, the reason we do that is really to just so we don't get bored in it. This week was about having some fun in it, especially with what we're going through. Sometimes I would prefer you just to stand straight, but for this time, let's have a little bit of fun. So most importantly, measure your shoulders. Place the elbows directly underneath the shoulders. Hands to pray, namaskar. Make your lines, make sure that your you have the same distance between your head to your elbow and from the elbow to the elbow and then elbow back to the head. Get your placement right. Hand down onto your, just above in your bridge, the top of the bridge. Hand down where that long finger is. That's what's going down onto the floor. Hands down, head down. Elbows. Walking yourself up, you place your knees on, you get your back nice and straight, you get your feet very comfortable, like a little book. And you hold it here. So hold for a little bit, you get yourself comfortable in the space, get your head right. When you're ready, if you just want to go here, you stay here. If you want to go up all the way, you go up all the way. And you hold it there for a bit. 
If you want to start twisting, if you get a little bit twist, you can do a little bit of twists. If you want to go out and doing some fun with the legs, playing with it, you do what you feel better. If you want to try the advance, you want to work to the sides and knees, working down, right down. You see how it works and then coming back up. Working to both sides if you can. So slowly down Ooh. and slowly up. And slowly when you come down, you place your knees. Your feet come down exactly how you went up. Bring your head down, two fists. So stay there for a bit. Enjoy this moment. I'm giving you some time, so I'm talking a little bit, so you can really go through the space. If you're not going into those,